Deuteronomy chapter 13. Now, this has been long awaited, and the Lord burdened, and I was so grieved that I wanted to teach about this, but I wanted to wait a little longer and see what would happen. So, a lot of people online will be mad at me, but that's all right. Uh, preaching and teaching the truth, I'm not trying to gain your love or your popularity, where I can build up views and subscribers. I don't care about that. I do try to uh, talk about subjects or something where it can gain your attention and then hear Bible-believing truth. I'll do that much. But I don't go so far down the road where I get, uh, where I want a bunch of weirdos and people with mingled beliefs who make up my channel and that's my fruit. Yeah. So I don't want that. I want my fruit to be something where people who hear Bible-believing truth and they change and they're thankful for it. So the thing is this, is that if you're one of those people who have been disagreeing with me all this time, yet still subscribe and watch me, hey, actually, I still welcome you. I still welcome you because you can hear at least some form of Bible-believing truth, and I'm grateful for that much. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to wah-wah and cry over you if you say, I don't like what you taught about that Christians can't drink beer or alcohol Amen. unsubscribed. I'm not going to cry about that. Amen. Because I'm used to a small ministry, Amen. and even online a small ministry. The Lord's the one who grows my church, and the Lord's the one who grows my online ministry. So I don't care about that, and He blessed me with fruits. Besides, I mean, let's say I hit a million subscribers on YouTube, and then I get kicked out one day, right? Then what's the point of all that? Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is there's this huge hype that there are sadly preachers today, and they largely make up the charismatic movement and i warned you so many times about this you gotta beware of this signs movement from the charismatic churches the signs movement where they talk about speaking in tongues uh, gaining dreams and visions where the lord told them and prophesying to you and the big deal they made was that trump would win a second term there are big shot preachers that talked about it prophesied it and guess what when uh biden took over as president, it flipped. The liberal movement and the Wiccan news journal media dubbed and made fun of Christians like, look at these Christians who were so much like Trump is their savior that's going to rescue them. Yeah. And they prophesied this and they made Christians look like a bunch of fools and idiots. When these false preachers do not represent all of Christianity, all the Christians believe. Bible-believing Christians who trust in the word of God, we believe in the prophecy of this book and not what people say. Now, this is so bad within our world. This is so bad within our world. They were prophesying that Trump would win a second term, blah, 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 blah. And then I had a dream or I had a vision and so many people were, this is so sad now. What's so sad that I don't, uh, I have a burden for you people online. I, I don't know why you get sucked up into this. This is where you subscribe to YouTube channels where they get over a million followers, over 500,000 followers, and over 300,000 followers, and the views literally total down to hundreds of thousands of views to millions. Why? Because a person prophesied that Trump would win a second term. Yeah. And so many likes on it that is beyond my understanding and burdens me on how gullible people are. It's so sad. Didn't you know there were people who got mad at those preachers who prophesied and said that you overthrew my Christian faith because of that? You know how much of a bad testimony that is? You preachers got blood on your hands. Right. And I always kick false prophets out there, and I don't apologize, and I call out names, and I don't apologize for that. Such preachers should be called out, rebuked, and warned. And I hope that you onlineers, you do get convicted and unsubscribe them, and then comment to them or even give them this video link so that these preachers can be under pressure and be careful what they say next time. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> because Jonathan Kahn, that guy who gets tons of... <clears throat> subscribers and views and then people amping up to his prophecies that guy didn't even go so far unless I'm wrong about that because I didn't catch him at all because I'm gonna I'm always trying to give people the benefit of the doubt 
I even give the liberal side benefit of the doubt, right? In my other videos. So I try to do that. So with Jonathan Kahn, I give him the benefit of the doubt that he did not say specifically that Trump would win a second term. You know why? Because he was embarrassed by his doomsday prophecy that he mentioned earlier about, I think it was the year 2016 that something would happen. But uh, you can, uh, it's easily found out in news media. It's pretty bad. And you can find it online as well. So Jonathan Kahn, he's been more careful and he worded it differently this time. Why? Because he knows that he can't just say things loosely. Because then people will dub him a false prophet. So you got to watch out for these guys. So Khan had enough sense to do that. Other charismatic preachers, they just shot off their full mouths. Why? Because they're used to saying it. And you know what's even more angry? How dare you say, God specifically said this. God told me to tell you, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. How dare you? How dare you say that? I mean, that is blasphemy from the pits of hell. Makes me very angry that you loosely take God, put God's name in you, in your false prophecy. I mean, isn't that taking God's name in vain then? It is very upsetting, blasphemous, and I do not appreciate that, period. And for people who say that I'm a hate preacher and oh, lower your volume, Pastor Kim, don't let your anger get to you, you guys are gullible sheep and I really weep for you. That's right. You say, really? You can get angry and then weep after that? Sure, Jesus did. Matthew chapter 23, he was, he was yelling at them, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, twofold more the child of hell, and at the end he wept over Jerusalem. So let's talk about this. This has been, I've been closing my mouth far too long about this. And I'm going to point out these heretics. And I'm going to point out their false prophecies. Amen. And I don't know if I'm dropping views right now or getting dislikes right now. But me, this is not about popularity and attention. It's because I care for your souls more. And I care that more that you get your eyes onto the book more than some guy who says, Oh, God told me this. In Jesus' name, this is what's going to happen. I had a dream. Jesus told me. You see that attention is on? Some guy who loves attention. Yep. See that? Who loves attention. Not on the word of God. Not on the word of God. If there's something that you learn from this preacher, I try to get you onto that book. I try to get you into that book. Now, let's uncover some of these false prophets here. First of all is... Donald Trump's faith advisor, we know Paula White, but she gave a prayer that basically Donald Trump would, that he would get the victory. God, will you send down your angels and have Trump win the re-election? And she was calling down angels from, she was really getting weird, all right? If you watch the video, uh, this is from the channel Now This News. And the title of the video is Donald Trump's Faith Advisor Leads Viral Sermon After Election Day. And actually, her testimony was completely ruined by that because so many liberals and atheists were pointing that out. But if you watch that video, then she was uh, giving out weird prayers and calling down angels. And she was calling down different nations like, I mean, I'm just throwing out random stuff. South America and South Africa. May those angels calm down and then... Help us with when this election. She was getting into just lappable la-la land now. Guess what happened? Obviously, God didn't answer that prayer. What well, does that make her? A false prophet then? Wow, what in the world is going on? Here's another famous person, Sid Roth. I don't know how I, It is so sad how many of you people subscribe to his channel. Yeah. It, it is so messed up. I think he's got over a million or 1.2 million or something. Okay. You know why? Look at his most viewed videos. You know what they are? Prophecy. Prophecy, vision, dream, dream. Prophecy, prophecy, vision, vision. Dream, dream, dream. Ah, that's how you build the subscribers and the views. You don't think I'm not going to hit big views after that? You don't think I'm not going to hit big views after that? Gene Kim has a prophecy and a vision. I'll tell you, so many Bible believers are going to click on that video. <laughs> They're going to go, what, what happened to Brother Kim here? You know? So, 
But prophecy, vision, that's where he's getting the most hit views. And people, I just have a, I don't understand. I'm so grieved for you guys. I hope that you'll break out of this dark fix that's got a hold of you. Yeah. It's so dark and sad. So Sid Roth, he has a video called My Response to the Election Results and Prophecies. And that's at a different channel. Uh, not his huge, huge channel with the over a million views, a uh, million subscribers. But if you uh, look at that video, I mean, he he actually gave false prophecies about that Trump would win a second term, that uh, Trump, that he would win. And he probably said that Biden would lose, etc. And actually in that video, I have to give him credit. He was actually one of the people who actually apologized. He actually apologized for what he said and what he prophesied. But what made me very angry was he said later after that, what I'm very disappointed in is that a lot of you people start to lose faith in God after Biden became president. Why, you wicked pastor, you, how dare you say that? Maybe because those people lot, you ever thought about because of you? They had so much trust and faith and hype in God that Trump is going to win. I believe, Lord. And some of them were fasting and praying. And you guys, uh, and then you guys, you know, you just get get the views and the subscribers off of people. You know, you just bleed off of these people, drain them dry. And then at the end, you say, I'm disappointed with you guys. I, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. That's extremely wicked, in my opinion. Now, this guy, he's a joker. Uh, a lot of people, they look up to some of these preachers because they're exposing, exposing globalists. So, look, whenever a preacher exposes a globalist, I'm for that too, okay? I'm in agreement with what they, uh, if there's something that they teach that is agreed upon in the Bible, I give them credit, okay? But, look, I do not give them credit when they teach something that's wrong doctrine, and yeah, I'm going to have to point that out, especially when it damages people's lives and perhaps even their souls. So the Victory Channel is another instance. I mean, they get these guys giving ridiculous prophecies in a lot of their videos, and they have this Trump hype, like, you know, he's got to win, and America will be fine, we're going to gain a revival, and ridiculous stuff like that. They had this guy, Hank Kuhneman, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, but this guy, he's became very famous for giving like loose prophecies about Trump. He was hitting Christian TV networks. But if you watch this video, it's titled God's Hand is Moving. Hank Kuhneman, New Prophecy, January the 6th, 2021. And in that prophecy, he was giving false prophecies about that you, Trump, where in his system and his government, there's going to be a huge change. And then we're going to get good people in the house senate or wherever he's talking about in the government and it'll be a brand new system and that these guys who are messed up in our government official system that they'll be cleaned out oh, <laughs> jokes on him right when biden became president the democrats starting to take everything over and met oh to god they won't take the judicial system next right that's our concern so i mean he gave a false prophecy loose of tongue through that video. Pat Robertson, who's the most famous guy with his 700 club, his video is titled Pat Robertson's Prophecy on 2020 U.S. Presidential Election Results and the Aftermath. And then he gave a prophecy that Trump would win, just like all the other false prophets. And guess what happened? He didn't win. And it was so bad that the liberal news media, they all crucified Pat Robertson because he's such a famous guy. And there were so many articles in the liberal news journal exposing him that he gave a false prophecy that it's so bad that even in the Washington Post, the title of the article is this. Tele-evangelist Pat Robertson says it's time for Trump to accept Biden's win and move on. <laughs> what in the world? So Pat Robertson... Pat Robertson completely turned a uh, 180. And when Trump was actually trying to fight to retain the presidency that time and trying to uh, point out that there's voting fraud or anything like that, what happened was Pat Robertson turned, 
turned to 180 and he said, Trump, you got to move on after that. <laughs> says, 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 says the guy who used to be on his side, says the guy who said that Trump would win. I mean, what in the world? You see this? This You ruin your testimony big time. You know what's sad to me, onliners? You're still subscribed to these guys. Wow. You still watch these guys. You forgive them for anything that they would say. Wow. Right. It's a shame. But when I point out what's wrong with wrong doctrine and show you the word of God, you all get mad at me. Okay. That's sad. What kind of spirit is possessing your mind for people who claim they always have the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues and get visions? Mm. Oh, it's horrible. This one is from uh, Kenneth Copeland. The title of the video is Pro-Trump Evangelical Kenneth Copeland Laughs ma uh, Manically Over Media Calling Biden's Win. If you actually watch that video, it was pretty shameful. But what was shameful is that because all the charismatic preachers were betting in about like Trump to make a comeback, Trump would win. So Biden is the president. Kenneth Copeland started laughing. And then what was so weird is that then all of his other members started laughing and they kept laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing minute after minute after minute that it looked really demonic and it looked very freaky. And the news media played that whole clip, showed it to people to show, see, these guys are wackos. Those who are Trump supporters, those who are Christians, and etc. That's the kind of impression that they give. It's so bad. It's so bad. Let me give a let me give another one now. People have gotten so obsessed with Trump. Now look, please, please, all right? But I don't care anymore because you're still gonna criticize me anyway. But please do not criticize me about, oh, you're turning, uh, you're turning against Trump. You're all for Biden. And look, I give honor to whom honor is due. You've seen in tons of my videos. I believe that, I mean, I could be wrong about this, but compared to all the presidents of the United States, Trump took the most action. So I thank God for what he did on his good pointers. But guess what? Trump, he's definitely a flawed man. I mean, be, before he became president of the United States, the liberal media ex, uh, exposed him for his dirty stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, with women and etc. Another thing is that if you look up his salvation testimony, people claim that, well, Trump, he must be a saved man, etc. But the closest testimony that I would get is where he, he talks about his born-again experience with Norman Vincent Peale's works and that it was at a Catholic Eucharist. Maybe he changed after that. I don't know. Maybe there's more things where he changed. But look, that's what I could dig up from a long time ago. Another thing was when they asked him when he was running for president what he thought about if would he have a transgendered person or a homosexual walk inside his building and he'd welcome them and etc. He says, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think it's a great thing. And yeah, I would. Come on, man. So you got to realize this. Trump is not your savior. Trump is not the ideal Christian role model. He has his sins. He's got issues. Honor to whom honor is due. And I am against the movement where it uh, attacks the word of God and the Bible. But guess what? Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, when you contradict the word of God, I expose it. Period. Period. I don't care who you are. So they've gotten so obsessed that a lot of Christians got involved with the QAnon uh, conspiracy. So I, me, I'm very lenient. So don't get on to me. I'm very lenient to the people who are all about Trump. I, I give them grace. I give them the benefit of the doubt. I mentioned in one of my videos that it's interesting when you look up QAnon that so far all the things that they predicted and warned about, it came to pass. But you got to realize this is that uh, QAnon, I never got so into it. That I start to teach it that it's scripture and everything is true. You know why? Because there a lot of stuff of what they talk about, it's shady. And I don't see it clearly in the word of God. So then QAnon has gotten so bad that when uh, a lot of them start to argue that Trump is going to make a comeback, he's going to win and etc. And then Biden won instead. Guess what? The conspiracy theorists 
all those people turned against QAnon and said, you guys are fakers, or you guys are psyops, or you guys messed it up. I mean, uh, big shot names like David Icke, for example, and David Icke, he's got issues. I think he even said Jesus Christ is some sort of reptilian or something like that. It compared to, But anyways, uh, even a guy named David Icke had enough sense where he wrote an article, QAnon bears striking resemblance to Bolshevik PSYOP from 1920s known as Operation Trust. Another instance, QAnon has gotten so far, guess what it carried on to? This guy, Gabe Hoffman, posted on his Twitter, three QAnon influencers have already claimed Biden was part of QAnon all along. <laughs> Grifting controlled opposition for lunatics, the guy said. See, that's how, that's how obsessed they are with Trump. I mean, I thought Jesus Christ is the final authority, not Donald Trump. If that guy is the one you look up to, man, you got issues, man. You got issues. You're not really looking into the word of God. So this is so bad among the Christian world. It's so bad. They've gotten so involved with this Trumpism influence that it's become like their idol and their religion. Here's a title from religionunplugged.com. It's became such a bad testimony that it even reached this kind of news source. Title of their article is Charismatics are at war with each other. Why? Over failed tr prophecies of Trump victory. Here's another article. This is so bad that there's another article from Religion Unplugged titled The Charismatic Christians Prophesying Trump's Victory and Not Backing Down. The one that I'm going to kick severely is because this guy thinks he's, uh, he can use scripture to justify his false prophecy. And that's Steve Chiocolanti, if I pronounce his last name right. But that guy made me extremely angry, that guy. The reason why is, is because compared to all the other false prophets, he kept using scripture to justify his false prophecy. And what makes, how can people be so blind to subscribe, watch, especially when he keeps advertising his book about the 10 things about Trump. And he got you suckers to buy that. Wow. And he keeps advertising it, and then it was hitting like number one, I think, at Amazon, etc. I'm just greed. Here's his title of his video that I watched. Uh, Seven facts about Trump re-election false prophecies. So he thinks views as so-called. Path to Victory and Second American Civil War. <laughs> okay, so here are his justifications. So let's first look at Deuteronomy uh, chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. So people have started to use these scriptural quotations, and uh, rightfully so, that a false prophet, how do we know what who a false prophet is? It's found at Deuteronomy 13. If he prophesies a thing and it doesn't come to pass, then we know that the Lord is not with him. And so let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 1. Verse 1. If there arise, so let me move over here so you can see the verses, people. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a what? Sign or wonder. Okay, see all of this prophecy stuff, vision stuff, all has to do with sign. It's called a sign. Now remember that. We're going to look at what this false prophet said. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Why? Because it contradicts his word. Verse 4, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his what? Commandments and obey his what? Voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. So the point is, is that if you also look at verse 5, for, verse 5 is another demonstration that a false prophet is still false even if his prophecy comes true. Why? Because his prophecy contradicts the word of God. That's important. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. 
Now look at this person. This prophet prophesies in the name of the Lord. Okay? Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And we will look at verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume, see that's all presumption. Oh, oh, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now, be honest. Don't, don't you lie, okay? You already lied enough, you false prophet. So don't lie on this one, okay? At least be a true prophet in this one and be honest. Will you not honestly admit that you are presuming? Mm. Presumption? Assuming? That's a good test. When you use the name of the Lord like this? Hey. All right. Read. We shall presume presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods even that prophet shall die and if thou say in thine heart how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord if the thing follow not nor come to pass that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously thou shall not be afraid of him so Chiocalanti, Sidroth, and all these people are false prophets. And guess what? An apology does not make up for that. A false prophet is a false prophet, period. And you just damage souls. Look, everyone sins, everyone falls apart. Sure, we can forgive you and etc. But don't call, but stop, loose, stop with your prophecy. Stop that. Yeah, all right? Why are you continuing it on, huh? That is so wicked. Giocalanti acts like a smart ally. Says, oh, if they didn't even read the same verse. At verse 20, it's talking, about in, it's talking about following false gods. Same thing with Deuteronomy 13. But me, we're not talking about following false gods. We're talking about following the one true God. So this verse doesn't apply to us. What, the wicked person, did he? Uh, how dare he say that? Sure, at verse 20, we can consider the name of false gods. But look, God is saying, verse 20, I have not commanded him to speak. Verse 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the who? Lord, the true God. So what God is condemning is you're giving a prophecy in the name of other gods and even me. So that's the point. Why? Okay, here's my question. If you think this does not include prophets who love Jesus and who's prophesying in his name and the name of the Christian God, I have a question for you. You're telling me there, that there is no possibility at all that there can be a prophet who speaks in the name of the Lord, the true Christian God, and be a false prophet? You're saying there's zero of them then. That's quite a bold claim. Can anyone profess themselves, I'm speaking the name of the true God, the Christian God? Then how are you going to test that false prophet? Yeah. I'll tell you how to test it out. Read the word of God. If it doesn't come to pass, then that, then that person at verse 22, he's a false prophet. Simple. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. you, know what, you know what this person says? Gio Calanti? Well, prophecy, such a smart aleck answer. Prophecy, uh, it doesn't come immediately sometimes. Sometimes a prophet will prophesy and it takes a, lo a long time later then the prophecy gets fulfilled. Wow, that is so evil. That is so evil. As a matter of fact, even uh, there are liberal journals exposing these false prophets and they're saying that those same preachers are justifying covering up their mistakes by saying God already con ordained him to be inaugurated Trump in heaven. That, you know what? Anyone can give up a spiritual excuse to that one. Well, how do you know that he's wrong then, Pastor? Couldn't it have been fulfilled at a later time? I would be very, in, you know what's gonna, uh, this is what's gonna be scary now, all right? What's gonna be scary later on if God forbid Trump's die at some time, I wonder how they're gonna cover up that mistake. I guarantee you this, they're going to keep covering it up. Tell them this. Tell them, tell me your prophecy specifically and what you believe the Lord said and that this will come to pass. And also tell us onlineers that if I am wrong about this one, then you can call me a false prophet. Yeah. Say that specific. What will dub you a false prophet? That's my question. What can we do to test you and prove that you're a false prophet? We need something to prove where you are. 
So give us a prophecy where we can put you to the test that this is true or not. Don't give us a no way out where, hey, I'm going to be true no matter what mistake you find. Tell me what you believe in, what you prophesy, and this is the word that you said, and that if I'm wrong about this, then you can call me a false prophet. Put it that way. Because why? You can't do it presumptuously at verse 22. See that? That's the key. That's his problem. Let me ask you this question. All right. He prophesied Trump would win a, another term, right? And all that. What was he thinking in his presumption? That Trump would win and Biden would lose? Come on, be honest and don't be a liar because you lied enough. What were you thinking in your mind? Did you, I mean, come on, be honest. You didn't have an inkling down, deep down inside your heart where you pre assumed and had a presumption that Biden would lose and Trump would win and it would be the second term? Really? Before, before a long time ago when you first said that. That's something I want to know. If you did, then guess what? You qualify Deuteronomy 18. That's what it's condemning. The prophets, when they prophesy, they don't go by uh, presumption and then their presumption turns out to be wrong later on. They don't do that. What they do is, this is what the Lord God clearly told me and I have to say what he told me. Like that. Why? Because even... A false prophet named Balaam knew the price if he didn't give word for word what God wanted him to say. That's why I know you qualify. Another thing I know you qualify is look at Revelation 2. You know, Ch uh, Chiocolanti had the audacity to say that, uh, you know, legalists, legalists, legalists. They always call Bible believers yeah. legalists. You notice that? These yeah. non-denominational type of churches. Yeah. Legalists where... Uh, they trying to accuse me of false prophet and other good preachers, great men of God of prophecy, uh, accusing them of false prophets. I mean, he was condemning them and he says that you shouldn't be like that. Then you're discouraging them from prophesying. Hey, guess what? Yeah, you should because this has gotten very loose that you're building up this, this amount of views and subscribers. There's got to be, uh, hold the brakes here. You're telling me without bounds and limits? These people trying to catch us in prophecy. That's not a right spirit to have. Oh, I beg to differ. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them what? Liars. We are supposed to test. Look at 1 John 4. 1 John 4. First John chapter 4. We are supposed to try the spirits and test them if they are of false prophets. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Uh... Notice that verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Where have you have heard that it should come, and even now already, is it in the world? Verse 6, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Notice that verse 1, 1 John 4, 1, don't believe every spirit that prophesies. You have to test them. Try them. Guess what? We're doing that. How dare you condemn us for doing what God told us to do? Amen. Calling us legalists? Unloving? What are you? Who do you think you are? You're, you think you're better than us? Because Chio Kalanti and these people, look at these prophets. I was the first one to give a prophecy that other people have not saw and before. And by the way, buy my book. Mm. Who's the one that's got issues, man? Amen. Who's the legalist here? Who's putting down people what in the world that is wicked from hell man i don't like that some people might give the excuse well pastor you, if you look at verse two and three it's only talking about people who don't believe jesus christ they're a false prophet a lot of these 
uh, preachers that you're kicking, they love Jesus Christ, they believe him. You're not getting the memo, friend. Sure, verse 2 and 3 is included. It's included. But look at verse 6. You're not reading. Hereby know we the spirit of what? Truth and the spirit of what? Error. error. Is God the Holy Spirit of error? No. Yes or no? No. no. Did these false prophets give an error in their prediction? Yes, and they're wrong. Amen. Except maybe Gio Calanti, maybe. But all, Sid Roth realized, I am in error. And Gio Calanti, if he's very honest, he knows these people were in error. So guess what he did? This wicked, evil man, you know why I'm calling him wicked and evil? He pulled up examples in the Bible where men of God, great men of God, made mistakes and errors. So then don't be so hard on us preachers. I mean, you got to give us grace. So he brought the example of the Apostle Peter, head of Christianity. He was corrected. Guess what, man? Simon Peter did not give a false prophecy that in the name of the Lord, Trump would be, win a second term or something like that. You know what he was? Uh, he wasn't giving a prophecy. He just made a mistake. Why? Because all of us makes mistakes. Look, I get that. Okay, I'm a sinner. I know better. I even admit that. Okay, a lot of us do. And guess what? Let's not be hard on these people that their videos had errors. Guess what? This pastor's capable of too. And I admit that. But what I'm condemning is somebody who has the spirit of the Lord and claiming this is what God told me to say to you. Then this is, I mean, then that is, wow. You're saying that this is what God exactly said, and you're attributing the spirit of error to God, not to a man. That's right. Guess what? I'm a man, and I make errors and mistakes. But guess what? God never does. And how dare you speak for God and saying that this is what God said? Yeah. And he gives up the example of, uh, oh, here's a great example. I mean, this is so idiotic. Go to Acts chapter 20. This is so idiotic. Go to Acts chapter 20. Agabus is a prophet, but even his prophecy got wrong. Is he mad? Look at Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. What, uh, this is so evil, man. It makes me very angry. Acts chapter 20. Now notice that Paul, he's uh, trying to sail toward Jerusalem, but then uh, there were prophets who were warning him, actually. He gives his uh, last uh, explanation at verse uh, 28, bidding them goodbye. And then in Acts chapter 21, that's where he's going. If you look at uh, Acts chapter 21, notice that the Bible says at verse 10, And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now, guess what? Did that come to pass? Yes, it did come to pass. They bound Paul and he even said that uh, I am in chains when he was uh, speaking to Agrippa. All right. He was in bonds when he was speaking to Agrippa and he was delivered to the Gentiles, to the Romans. But guess what this sly devil did, Giocolanti? He connected this with uh, verse 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see saying, The Lord will of the Lord be done. That sly devil connected that prophecy from Agabus with that quote. We're saying the prophecy included where Paul would die at Jerusalem. Did he die at Jerusalem? No, he did not die at Jerusalem. And they said, uh, are you kidding me, man? This is not, okay, 13 and 14 is common errors that Christians go through. And these Christians were in error because Paul was not supposed to go to Jerusalem, actually. That's why the Holy Spirit forbade him to go. I mean, some of you don't read verse 4, did you? Verse 4, the Holy Spirit said that he should not go there. So Paul disobeyed, and he says, I'm ready to die for the Lord Jesus. And then, like typical church members, understanding, looking at the benefit of the doubt for their pastors, they say, like, God's will be done then, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That happens. My, uh, you see this? Oh, it makes me extremely angry. Now, you know what he did? This, oh, 
Look at Romans 15. This is what else he did. Romans 15. How dare, how dare you use scripture to try to, uh, this is what you did. One, you made Agabus uh, capable, of, you made Agabus a false prophet. Like he made error so I can make an error. How dare you? One. Number two, you say that uh, we preachers, so how are we going to hold account of you preachers who make a mistake in prophecy? How are we going to hold you accountable to that? You're saying, don't blame us, leave us alone. We're capable of error, so why don't you just give us grace? Then what if some preacher, come on now, what if some preacher takes advantage of that and gives so many more loose prophecies and gets more money, buy my book and give me money for this one, this one about the prophecy. How are we going to keep those guys accountable then? Look, we can maybe give grace to Chio Kalanti, Sid Roth, and all these other uh, clowns. And they are clowns. They made a clown of Christianity, and the whole world looks at it that way. We can give grace to these people, but if even these people have to be honest. What if there's a preacher who comes out and prophesies in God's name and then makes money off of it? How in the world are we going to hold that person accountable? You never give some kind of instruction on that one, do you? Instead, you justify yourself so that what? If you keep justifying yourself, then there's no, then there's no solution. There's no method to hold a false prophet accountable then. Look at Romans chapter 15, verse 24. Paul said that uh, he would go to Spain. That's what he wrote in the word of God. And then the fool said, yeah, he's a fool. Oh, pastor, you shouldn't say that. How dare you to a brother in Christ? Hey, you know what Jesus Christ told fellow saved people at the last chapter of Luke? Fools. You don't read that. He called them fools. Well, Jesus is God, so he can say that. Did you read uh, the book of Corinthians? What did Paul say? Fools saved fellow Christians. Christians are very gullible people, and it makes me grieved and sad and very angry that how can you be so blind and ruin your lives and blindly just keep following that way? If you fall into a ditch, that's your fault then. All right, so the fool said at verse 24 that, well, Paul wrote in inspired scripture, he would go to Spain and it ended up where he didn't end up going to Spain after that because he was imprisoned and et cetera. Ah, so let's look at, let's take his logic then. Isaiah 14, Isaiah 14. Let's take his logic then, okay? So his logic is, so notice that Paul made a mistake in God's inspired prophetic scripture that he would go to Spain to see them, but it turned out he didn't because, as we all know, he was imprisoned uh, at Jerusalem, went to Rome, and then after that, he, uh, when he got free, he did go to Spain after that, probably. So his excuse is this is written in God's prophecy in inspired scripture, God's inspired scripture, but it has a mistake. That's blasphemy. You just called God's inspired scripture error. Mistakes. That's why, uh, why we don't believe in multiple modern versions. Because they think that there are errors in the Bible. No, we believe in a perfect Bible. Every word is perfect. Amen. That you can bet your soul upon that this is what God says. Yes. We believe in that. So let's take his logic, okay? L okay, let's consider every single word here as inspired scripture in his mindset. Then let's see if this is what God says, okay? And God made a mistake. Look at uh, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine art, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Okay. These specific words, are, are they holy and pure and righteous? Or are these words sinful, obviously, and satanic? They're sinful. They're satanic. Why? Because it's from the devil. So the devil said that. But it's written in inspired scripture. So maybe we can let it go, right? No, th th this is the point. This is their problem here, okay? Inspired scripture keeps a record of people giving prophecies, historical accounts, genealogical names, and even quotations of what people said, and the author's natural style and thinking as well. 
That includes the mistakes of the people. You know why? Because God holds no punches. His inspired scripture is going to show you everything. He's going to show you everything of mankind's mistakes, Satan's sin, and the holiness and righteousness of God. Hell, he holds no punches in his inspired scriptures. But this does not mean that God out of... Uh, that God told me to say, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. You, if I take that kind of ridiculous logic, that's so silly. That is so silly. All right. Concerning about, okay, let's go back here. Let's go back. If we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, let's close it here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay, let's total it out. How do I know that he's a, uh, and all these people are false prophets? Is because, one, he doesn't, uh, they don't show any accountability for a false prophet who prophesies in the name of Jesus, uses his name, or in the name of God. They have nothing where we can keep, test them or hold them accountable about that one. That's fishiness, number one, at least. If not proof, number one, that's fishiness, number one, suspicion, number one. Number two, the person, when they gave that prophecy and used the excuse, well, prophetic uh, prophecies, it can be a true prophecy, but it just takes a long time later on to be fulfilled. Okay, then what were you, what was your presumption when you said Trump would win? Come on, be honest. Be honest, all right? What was your presumption on heart of hearts? And you say that online and say that, you know, this is as, as God strike me down, for if I'm wrong about this, but I never th had a presumption in my mind that uh, Trump, that he would win automatically and that Biden would lose when I prophesied about Trump would win a second term. You say that, all right? But if you did have that kind of presumption, then guess what? Don't use the excuse that prophecy fulfilled later on. No, at that moment of presumption, you gave the prophecy. And God says, that's why we know you're a false prophet when you use my name. Third thing, third thing is you don't believe the Bible, period. Well, God, he said, look, God, he never said all these things. Read your Bible. That's the idea. Now, be, uh, okay, some people, they're going to get nitpicky, all right? They're going to say, oh, look, Pastor Kim said this is what God exactly said, so he's just as guilty too. Come on, man, grow up, all right? If you want to say that, go ahead. But you know I'm not saying that. I'm just kind of demonstrating an example here. God, he does not want us to look at these people to find his words. How, uh, why look at men? You got to look at the Bible. You got to look at the Bible. Well, why did God speak to prophets back then? Didn't God say, uh, covet earnestly the best gifts and, you know, despise not prophesying and etc.? Yeah, but your problem is this, is that Deuteronomy 13, it said that prophecy and vision and all that is what? A sign. A sign. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Notice what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 22, for though who? Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we, see contrast to that, but we what? Preach Christ crucified. See, our job is to preach about the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know where that's from? That's all found in the preaching of the word of God at verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Where do you find the wisdom at? It's in the word of God, is it not? The word of God is our final authority that we rely upon. And we don't seek after signs. We go after the word of God. You know what the Bible says? Uh, the Bible says is that, uh, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's where our faith should rely upon. We walk by faith, not by what? Sight. These guys go by sight. That's what the Bible warns you. We don't go by uh, sight. We go by faith. And faith comes uh, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, why did they have prophecies back then? Simple, because of the Jewish people. Look at the first time the Bible mentioned sign. You know what it was? For Jewish people, because they won't believe until they see. And then that's why you have to understand dispensationalism. It will save you from a lot of wrong doctrine. Dispensationalism teaches 
very basically, there's a difference with Old Testament and New Testament. Can anyone agree with that? It's that simple. Why? Because the Jewish people is what made up Old Testament, but then the church is what made up the New Testament. And what happened is, is that when God was gradually, God started with the Jewish people with signs, and then later on when he was establishing his church, he was gradually fading away with the nation of Israel. So then the prophecies that were ongoing during that time, it was gradually fading away too. And then finally, when we had the complete word of God here in our hands, that's where we can put our faith upon. Why? Because people didn't have the Bible back then. So they couldn't get a word from God unless they had a prophet telling them. But now we have the word of God in our hands. For some of you, uh, I can't go in exhaustive detail defending why prophecies and visions are gone, except the, uh, and that the word of God still stands, but I could... I can't do it in this video because I have to close it here, but I would recommend for you to please watch uh, Amazing Dispensationalism from Genesis to Revelation. And for some of you onliners who don't know, uh, it's actually online. You can actually even buy the book if you want. But by the way, if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. It's free. Uh, we're just only selling it for $3. $3. I don't, I don't try to get millions of dollars. God could give me the money. But these things are provided for you people where you can look at it if you want. Just type down, if some of you are looking for it, I know I had some people asking me, just type down Amazing Dispensationalism from Genesis to Revelation in Amazon uh, or in Kindle, and that yellow book will pop out, and then the name will be G.H. Kim. All right? I hope that can be eye-opening for you. Also, watch the video How to Witness to Charismatics. And that can be very helpful for you concerning about the science movement. Let's close with prayer. Close in prayer. God, my Father, I pray for these people's souls. I mean, I believe in your power. And I believe that uh, you can convict and change these people's hearts. It's up to them, though, Heavenly Father. Uh, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I pray that these people will not be stubborn and that they won't be hard-hearted, that you'll soften their hearts to the word of God, open their eyes to the truth, and uh, let them... Free themselves from these false prophets, please, Lord. Don't let them watch them anymore. Don't let them uh, join their movement anymore. Free them from this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.